Hey guys, what's up? We have Miku being the first for the first time ever. <laughs> Welcome, Socrates, as well. David, uh, we are live. I am just making something to eat while we wait for more people to join. So I'm here. Let's just wait like five minutes. I will also be posting the link on the Discord channel. Where is the link, though? McDonald's? What do I mean, McDonald's? Here I'm back. Ah, you said uh, you were eating McDonald's. I see. Uh, today there was a sale for Burger King. I mean, some coupons like get 10 of discount every 25 purchase. Not number of sandwiches. I mean, uh, in reais. So it's kind of like every five USD you spend, you get two back. Something like that. 
Hello, Emerald Mera, welcome. Hello, Pika for you, Moo Moo. Permanent Bennett, also known as El Chuchu. Oh, this is a talk about the new skippable banners. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe not. Muzar is skipping. He says he is, but how do you know if he's skipping or not? So, uh, I was waiting a little bit for hands for retreat post, but I think uh, he may be busy today. So, uh, the alternative is to shack on Yapi post and also shack on uh, Naurama Saga website. I wish you skip it more. <laughs> Sometimes we do, right? And we consider that the game changes a little and it doesn't do what we want it. Like, uh, when news got released, we thought we would need more of the ailment resistance. And then we didn't need as much. It was more about uh, just all of that defense boosts all the time, right? We are live for banner discussion. You are glad you're skipping key. Still cleared all content, right? I'm always first when you're... What you're talking about. Uh, in your word, yes. Very interested into counter robbing. Sling robbing. I don't regret pulling. I feel like I used her for two real good fights. And then uh, the challenges change it. I don't understand. We started to leave an era where we needed like five defense boosters or more. I mean, not five defense boosters, but at least five defense boosts. Welcome, Doug. Pool hype squad. She was Asper Banner, anyways. Oh, yeah, she was on Asper Banner. Hmm. I regret you pulling, huh? Someone regretting for someone else. What are the styles you are more after, dog? We have here uh, something very interesting that they are doing. Um, that's also a first. They allowed us to get a Saga Soul banner check. Uh, this Robin, fake Robin. Was Saga So it didn't make sense for him to be Saga So because Saga So banners are usually for unpopular or I don't know secondary characters. Why would this Robin be a secondary character? He's well important. He's impactful to the lore of the game. And then there's Ward and this guy that I always forget the name. I didn't get him my playthrough. Young Fang, yeah. So this guy could be Saga Soul if you think about it. But Robin is so attached to the Lord of Romance in Saga Tree that he should never be a Saga Soul. So what they did was to get this banner and uh, share it among the two others. And Muse got the best since she got two of the styles. You can see here Young Fang and Ward. And the other Robin was added to. Yoda Robin? Wait, wait, is it the Yoda Robin? I get confused with this. Yeah, Yoda Robin got added to the uh, Professor banner. Professor is the name of the banner. Interesting. You are after Robin, of course. Okay. Miku says he wants Hawk. Ah, he was expecting Hawk banner. Yeah. Uh, Trun says I should skip six more days and Saga Beyond will release. JP version will have something. Not sure what we'll do. They already have the welfare versions of the new protagonists. Hello, copy. Welcome. Oh, this is just for Black Leonid fandom. Though I do like Muse Robin on the other banner. Oh, yeah. Muse and Robin seem to be the most interesting ones, in my opinion, as well. Fairy is just a generic copy of the other version of Brownie. I mean, a little different, but it's nothing special at least muse and robin have something different yeah uh well ward also has a little socrates everyone is skipping dog never skips <laughs> dog is a collector copy says i'm sorry to burst your bubble shirt but let the but the robins are not important or popular yeah they are not because they don't have many styles vampire lady has five styles while they don't have I'm pulling skinny Robin, says Socrates. Robins are an hero. 
I need to get shared a full saga Emerald Beyond game. Mm -hmm. I'll try to get in contact with uh, Square Enix to see if they can send me a copy of the game. A Steam copy. I don't know if I'll be able to get it before release. Tobin Vampire Lady calling? Oh my god. So, I didn't know that they were not so popular, but it doesn't matter. They, they do appear in the game. They are recruitable characters. Vampire Lady is not a recruitable character. So, Saga so makes no much sense, I believe. Young Fame could make sense because I don't know. But if you say so. Um, so, the first banner here in the Yapi post is Professor. And Professor is a little strange at the same time, a little embarrassing, but I don't know. This type of strategy we saw before and it didn't stick. But Professor has this skill called it. Uh, well, let's see here if there's a name. No, no. It doesn't matter the name, but it's Professor Special. Yes, I believe. It's a, a C power skill that can recover. Yeah, recovery. Here's target from all ailments. It grants this Tenkai Musou that has no turn limit. What you get from this is on the start of a turn, you trigger this 10 times. Morale up 50%. And a defense up for one uh, one turn, but it's just that you decrease damage taken by 25%. And then this character will be buffing uh, all status by 15% for those 10 turns and also recover 3 BP. Uh, this 3 BP is just instant or is it for every turn? That's something that I don't know. Yeah, it should trigger every turn. So this is kind of like the evolution of that whole idea of blue. Blue uh, UDX style was giving people extra power, but blue could stack. Just 50% damage increase in the current game, it doesn't matter as much. Just bring, like, uh, Katarina and she already gives more than that. But it's about that, I don't know, defense up that could help. In JP, it says Guard Up Medium, so that was changed into Global, I believe. Uh, Sox says I don't like Professor. And Socrates also says copy says they are unpopular, but that's definitely because they didn't do anything with them. As well. Three protagonists they gave in are pretty good actually. Yes, they are. They can be used for hard challenges. Hmm. It doesn't say. That professor was changed. Here on Saga Wiki Discord, they say the professor got a buff to Dexterity only. And here it says defense up 25% one turn. That's different. Because here it says that you get this guard up for every turn. I don't know. Defense up would be much better because it could stay with the character, right? And you could still cast another guard up. Strange yet interesting. That was Doug's nickname in college. Ha! <laughs> Always. Always. Hello, Solid. Welcome. You just arrived. Professor gives out her special medicine to one character. Special medicine? Don't even ask what have. Um, Professor Boo? Ah. Grand Professor with Pink so he can strip his own ones. <laughs> <laughs> a counter mechanic to a bad passive. She's solid for hard content, but not really sure where she stands out over there. Yeah, you see, uh, she can remove um, buffs, right? The targets, buffs. They have uh, buff breakers in this banner. It's a little too late, but yeah, people that have difficulty with a Vampire Lady, they can use this. I beat it without, but I had two nukers. So this thing here is interesting, but it's just for one character. Of course, it's overpowerful what's for the party. And she can only use it once, and now she can cast it again after turn 10 on global. That's what I heard. Uh, let's see if we can see it here. Na, 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 na. Yeah, restores use limit of Professor Special by 1. So theoretically, if you have a very long fight, you can keep giving defense ups to a special character, but will that matter anyway? She has way too many RNGs. You guys know that I love RNG on passive, right?
There is one good thing. She has a skill that costs 10. Mm. Where she gets a chase attack. But she does not have a chase attack on start. And she can get 3 chases of C power. But this skill here is strange. It will debuff STR and Endurance by 10%. So you can get as much as 30% debuff for free. But after some time, so it's not a really good character to start the debuff. And she also has a chance to apply attack and defense down. Chance. 25% chance with each bullet. So totally unreliable. So I can see that in the end it's really not game changing at all. And she has two defense uh, reduction passives. 5 EP per turn. So that she uses her skill 2 every 2 turns. And um, that's kind of it. A lot of different passives uh, with 50% chance to trigger. Like... She can uh, grant an attack boost. She can grant an another attack boost. Is that right? She can buff all, all status. She can also give attack uh, action order. She can recover. Now, wait. Uh, what are the ones that have a chance to trigger? It's a little strange to understand this. The following effect will be activated with a certain probability. Grants attack boost to all alive. Blah, 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 blah. Is it everything that has a chance? Because I don't really understand this. Passive creep is one thing, but all the little pop-ups to a character during battle is down creep. <laughs> so many different effects that we lose like 5 seconds per turn. Mmm. Everything's a chance. Pretty bad then. Unless you have difficulty with the Remembrance uh, Vampire Lady, I see no reason to pull for this character. She can make your Leon stronger, and Leo will then probably finish the fight faster. But then, besides Vampire Lady, I will not be using this character in my real teams. Socrates says, I have Halloween Arsenal, you live. Of course, Arsenal is good. She has chase, doesn't she? Has only after skill 3. She's not that strong for the RNG. You are right, Socrates. Reginald says, I need more Robins. We all do. Just thinking like 6 turns should be teach you to 60 on 3rd turn. Yeah, but without the very small healings and all. Like, teach you 60, you can give more, no? But if you consider everything at once, uh, all the chances of for this and for that. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to do 60. And so it says I use it the first SS Arsenal, and I remembered at least one person mentioning they use it as Arsenal. Yeah, you can. Probably it is getting power crept already. I don't know if old bosses are getting hard difficulties in JP. Hopefully not. I don't want to see that anymore. She's your gun support here. Not enough gun support. I need every Romance in Saga 3 character. Your wallet cry. Oh, regional. I understand. You love the characters. You already go over Robin. No, 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 original. Uh, we'll go after then later. So I don't really feel like this character will improve anything besides on Power Lady Fight. Uh, people will not be using this character for our challenge. So I don't know. It's not that it doesn't work entirely. It could work, but why? Like, why try to use this skill 3 after you use it as skill 2? And you're going to take so much time to build on your debuffs. Like, Ellen already has problems to be a debuffer, but she's a much better character than uh, Professor overall. Uh, let's see what Yapi says here. Professor is a nice gun support and can be useful against the upcoming high difficulty remembrance battle against Megalith Dragon. I believe everyone can be used because we don't have many guns. Spell bullets against good against Vampire Lady. I agree for those struggling to clear with an S style arsenal. An ability to restore the use of skill 2 is nice, even if it takes 10 turns as future boss has tons of HP and fight tends to be long. I agree, but the thing is, uh, you are just improving one character of your party. And if it's Leon or T260, it is good enough, but even then, if you can clear the fight in just a little more turns, I don't know if Professor is helping you all that much, but. Since you just need to clear the challenge once, then okay. But see, a start of a turn activates attack boost, attack boost again. Is this really the case? No, it's a defense boost. Yeah. 
it's a defense boost. Much better, because uh, that's a bad translation then. Um, defense boost can help, right? Attack boost increases damage, but it's not important. So probably this one here is different. First or the second? First, sec the second. Attack to all allies. Extreme effect. Wait, extreme effect is 50%. Well, I don't know if the AoE version has 50%. Defense to all allies. Mm, maybe up information is strange. Thomas, funds raise, raise up? Besides Doug, there's just one more. Trago Travi. For a headliner, she's bad, yeah. She has a new style on JP? What, Professor? Oh, yeah, she just got one, right? Is it on our Masaga already? No, it's not. It's not here. You rather use Bunny Emilia? Yeah, for one challenge clears, yes. Maybe it's useful to have an inheritance. Mm, I don't know. But what do you think about this, Socrates? How much do you get from the attack and defense boost? I wish his styles were stronger. Thomas is my favorite, followed by Julian and Robin. At least Julian has a place in the meta. The newest Thomas is not that bad, it's just way too specific. I'm sorry, but there are other supports released that are ordered in that. You will assume 40%. Hmm. So you'll have to keep shacking on... Now we're must as well. You need to pull Thomas to showcase in encounter. <laughs> uh, you guys. Black or just uh, STR increase? You pull for me? Okay, you do it for me. Imagine if I pull Thomas just to showcase Thomas on Arsenal that I already beat. Well, since Black only changed um, his status, we can also check Norma Saga. Herman. <laughs> this skill is the same one as you see as a chase with Hargy. The second skill is an AoE buff break. So uh, it's the first AoE buff break besides Arsenal and also Shiel, but Shiel has something else. And Sirius. Uh, his version is not fast as well, but what about his agility? 99% is good. It's good. Uh, how many times do we need an AoE buff break? I don't know. Then the third power back blade. This gives uh, Morale up and guard up medium. Just to himself. Just to himself. An attacking chase with high speed. Uh, that's... Forgot the name of this. But that's the same skill that Alan has. So it gives an attack boost of 25%. Slashing blood. In global it has triple S power. You have Paulus for AoE. Oh yeah, Paulus. I forgot about Paulus. Paulus version is cheaper as well. And Paulus is a very good style. Fifty percent chance to chase again with pirate heat. A skill that has counterattack stance. Hmm. Not a guarantee, not really great. Buffs STR and S. Uh, Dex routine gets heat up. Really, really mid. Really, really mid. Who likes black? Sadly, this guy has no place in the meta. 
But it's an X user, right? People can still use him somehow. When being attacked, damage reduces by 25%. When landing an attack, recovers HP, recovers on BP. Also, when landing an attack, has the guarantee chains and reverse delta. And 50% chance to trigger the other skill. Wait. Reverse delta is a guarantee. The other one, that is not. Or is a reverse delta that... I don't get it. When a technique is... Used high split Naba is activated with a certain chance. Ah, this is the chance, and the counter one is the guarantee. Oh my, now it makes sense. Sure, loves axis styles these days. Pooh, ah, yeah, I have three new of the axis styles. Black is a snack, next needs more support. No, the counter skills a guarantee. Uh, it's because of the order that it shows here on our Masaga. So the Reddit post from Yapi was right. So the thing here is, uh, this guy is totally, but totally, totally replaceable by the new Hawk that we'll get uh, not in much time. This Hawk here has attack and defense boost to the party once per battle. Uh, this will probably get some recharges, I don't know, in global. I don't know if he gets recharges of this. He doesn't. Maybe global will allow him to recharge. It's not a guarantee, but it doesn't matter. This guy can buff. He buffs all status with a skew. And he can also grant attack and defense boost when attacking. See. So he also has a chase. And an overdrive chase. He overdrive chases with that uh, damage and buff. And he chases with quick spin plus. That's weak. Very, very weak. It's kind of like the, the chase that the newest um, Razen has. No music. Okay, okay. Let's... Uh, place more music. One second. Hmm. Wanna play Saga Dance? Oh, there are some ads. I don't wanna start. Oh, some ads. Okay, now it's start playing. So, uh, this banner is not that far now that they are skipping more and more. Hawk is miles better, but black is for run mechanics. But then, <laughs> here's my my plan. Uh, my plan is to um, get this Hawk here. This Hawk, or is this other one? Um, Hawk has this skill here. Let's check. From inheritance. He will probably give us a ticket to select someone from an anniversary. And he has Torpid skill. Here, Militant Slash in Lobo is different. It's a fast AoE attack that he enters a defensive counter stance and counters with Savage Slash. And it becomes just 5, and it will be buffing Will. See, uh, you can actually make him a counter specialist as well. Torpid didn't have counter in GP. No, but the, the skill was changing in Global, a little different, no. Or is it the same thing? I'm not so sure. Let's check this hawk here. I'll get this one and use the counter with this because I don't have Torpy. It doesn't say here. But I can pull for this banner because it has this version of Asia. No, not this banner. The other banner. The other banner will have another version of Asia that will make the current Asia even better. This Hawk, but since he has attack boost, defense boost, and status buffs, he is a much interesting character. Yeah, still good at least highlight the role black plays, even if I don't recommend pulling. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, so he is a counter specialist, as you can see. The guarantee attack is the one that enters counter pirate hit. It's an S power attack slash and blunt. After attacking, he enters a defensive counter, not an evasive one, and he counters with X bomber. Max Bomber is a double S power attack slash and blunt, so he can focus on slash and blunt. When the attack lands, there is a chance to reduce the target STR by 15%. Really? Uh, that's. Let me check this out. Uh, it has to be medium then if he does have that because it's rank 1, right?
Axe Bomber. It's 10% instead. I think that's a mistake on Yapi because uh, you use this on rank 1. So I can debuff STR and Endurance by 10%. Yeah, share margin, button, button spooling in reverse. It's a subpar Torp, I got it. <laughs> yeah, Torp is better. Those with Torp should totally avoid this black. So you would at least... Okay. Black had a counter skill on Platinum's Typhoon, remember? He does, it's come on, baby. But it's a very weak skill. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, yeah, that's the name. The user enters a counter stance. It's not a defensive counter stance, does not even decrease damage. And counters with come on, baby, that can also debuff STR. <laughs> yeah, come on, baby, yeah, I remember this skill. Come on, baby, chair <laughs> 2024. <laughs> so, okay, uh, start of turn buffs STR and Dex by 25%. 25% has to be extra large. Yeah, it is. 25%. Buff status is nice. But the, the, the chains attack is not that strong. But with the chance to chase, it's okay. It's kind of like how you see uh, Kali damage, but he can just keep countering with just the same skill. But overall, it's simple. Slash is plenty. Blunt as well, to be honest. So, no much place for this guy in the meta. At least if he had something for the party, but he doesn't. Doesn't even have taunt. So, it's a counter specialist without taunt. Okay, Hawk doesn't have taunt, but then I would just use him on very specific situations. It's just good if you get him off of bottleness, yeah? So, Black is another one that is very... Mid. Very, very mid. The C power AoE attack there with buff breaks, but 9 BP is a lot. The skill that can recover when he attacks, that's not bad. And the skill that has morale up and defense up. No, it's not defense up, it's. Um, guard up. Defense up is permanent. Both have 5 turns. Still, it's something that will clash with some other units. And it's just for himself. Prefer black to professor? I prefer professor, to be honest. No, 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 don't need to pull a professor. I feel like it's totally unnecessary. Uh, Yappy comments saying that Black is an interesting axis counter style. The only issue is that he must attack before the boss. Yeah, there is this problem as well. What is his agility? 90, 99. It's not bad, but it can still lead to problems. And uh, the only issue is that he must attack before the boss to activate pirate hit and go into a defensive counter stance. If the boss acts before Black, his entire kit sort of falls apart since he does not have any fast attacks. Of course, he can use the Godspeed stance formation, but that formation does not provide any damage mitigation or defensive buffs. Skill 2 buff removal is used for Vampire Lady Remembrance, if one has not cleared yet. Yeah, you can also use Hardy via Inheritance. Uh, some people may struggle without Hardy, so maybe that's the thing. Pull on use better, yeah, <laughs> let's get to that. One thing Shar desperately needs is gun styles that do anything. Retire Cindy. No, Cindy is keeping up. I'm a fan of Cindy Lauper, so that's why I'm using Cindy. Hello, Luigi Leon, welcome. So, the next one is Leonid. It's a Mart Jammer. Uh, what was changed for Leonid? Just status, but also passive number two. Hmm. After landing an attack, activates Bluji Palm. It's an 8 power attack. Blunt and Shadow. So, starts the fight with the Overdrive Fillet. Start of the round buffs on Will. Start of round only. Start of turn. Ah, because he buffs every turn later. And ailments as well. When landing an attack, grants the target Vampire Brand. Vampire Brand. On the enemy, activates the following. Max of two times. Reduces his own STR energy. Uh, wait, this is the same thing as Summer Orlate? 
increases 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 i was surviving allies enemies str and agility by five so you just keep it up the floor yeah needs more chases when we get saga from true two banners we are the enemy ah oh, yeah we are the enemy on this in this case right <laughs> <laughs> there was another version of a um, style that had this as well. He has Morale up and Morale down. Morale up to himself only. Morale down medium for three turns. That's not bad. Skill 1 is just a free, almost free attack. Skill 3, Diabolus touch. He buffs. Whoa, wait. Hmm, recovers HP by small. Quite a lot. The buffs STR and agility by medium. Active usually means medium. But the uh, wait, it goes from 15 to 10? <laughs> it decreases. <laughs> no, medium is 20. Then he self buffs medium. That should be 30. Okay. Uh, he feels all hits. Gorge, start of turn, buffs will okay, you meant resistance. When attacking the enemy. Ah, uh, but now that he has a chance, this makes sense. He has a chance. So when he attacks an enemy, he's going to cast his own power brand two times. And actually four times, but then uh late. Let's see. The start of a turn, the following facts will be activated. Two times. Ah, okay. Two times, but then it will stack. If, uh, okay. It will trigger two times on the next turn, but you can still trigger it again for a total of four triggers? Because he attacks and chases. And he will be applying this all the time. Four times an uh, STR and agility debuff means 20% debuff. Uh, still not that high. And then he will be buffing STR and agility of everyone by the same, 20. Uh, not even close to any of our recent debuffers. Not even close to what Ellen can do. Or Paulus for the matter. Or even Summer Orlete. Basically like Orlete self debuffs and then the squad gets a buff as well. I don't remember... Uh, do Summer or Let to give a buff to the squad when they behave? Binding Flames. No. Nah, it's just an extra. Yeah, it's kind of an evolution of the idea, but uh, since he only has... Yeah, you're still only uh, gonna get four times max, right? Or am I reading it wrong? Not great. I don't know. It doesn't make me want to get. Yeah. He's dead. He's dead in the puddle. Just wanna know if Fluffy Robin gonna rule, rule the game as he rules our hearts. Maybe. Maybe nine nights time. And also welcome. So, uh, really, another no. You already have so many uh, Marts users. Um, agility and STR makes it less interesting than Summer Orlete was. That was STR and Intelligence. The buffing agility is not that important anymore. And while he will probably do enough damage, it's just that we don't need that type of damage. It's someone that you can fully skip as well. Competing with Xiao. And Xiao debuffs more. Yeah, I'm good. Just like you said. And then, uh, what Yapi says here is, Leonid here is a mixed bag, having a bit of everything, including the buff akin to Summer Orlete. Yeah, you were right. Have the boss, uh, the boss 
to buff our party, a little similar to how Sword Rock Bouquet works, but other than that, most of these other buffs are for self only. In the current meta, in terms of being art styles, there are better options. I agree with you. He really doesn't work well. He can debuff with his skill tree, though, but uh, that will help him. Uh, uh, he can already debuff 20%, so he can reach 40% debuff at max potential for STR. If it was intelligence, then great. But since it's agility, if he has enough BP to keep using this skill, he needs 9. Uh, depending on the BP generation that you have, you can get to this point. But he's much better in global, yeah. I like his older version more, the one that has many chases. And he wants to use normal attacks. Yes, that one has the um, euthanized skill. One sec. So now we got to Robin Fake. It's an ass's word style, and he is also a tank. When being attacked, if oneself is in a pre-action state, reduce damage taken by 50%. This is the same thing as with Monica, right? When an ally is being attacked, takes their play. Ah, oh, yeah, this guy has a 50% chance to cover Socrates. Now you're on that. 50% chance is big. I was talking about a 25% chance not being really great, but 50% makes it better. After activating Robin's mark, and Barrow thought, ah, oh, yeah, uh, I shackled this guy back then, and I kind of know what he does. He is a little piece of uh, hybrid design. He wants to attack before he triggers something. Let's go to this guy. He, he has to use two different skills before he triggers a special effect, like... Um, Let's see here. After activating Robin's Mark and Barrow Assault, gets Proof of Mystery. That is, you have to use uh, Skill 2 and Skill 3. And after you use it, he gets Proof of Mystery. I guess in the same turn. 25% chance in single turn. <laughs> there are better options. They resume off all new units. Not always. And this guy has a very similar effect to Sarah. No, sorry, with Monica. Look. Uh, you're going to have to use these two skills, Robin Mark and Barrel Assault, and then you're going to get this. I do believe that this will be for as long as it triggers. Say, uh, effects are activated a number of four times. So if he's fast, he has delay, it seems. You want one of the skills, he has delay. So he will give attack and defense boost four times, and they have two turn effect. So he needs to cycle those two skills so that he can get more of this. It's super strange. The cycle is S3 to S2. Borrow South first and then uh, Rolling's Mark, right? The first one has delay. But he also gets this um, failure to land that gives him a uh, delay or not. Secondary attack posture. Delay. So he will be delayed. So you use this skill, and then you use the second on delay. So on turn three, you have the effects because you are on delay. And then uh, gets a screwdriver. No, no, this is uh, it's not related to this, is it? Welcome you. He delay passive that S three gives to him. Yeah. So after he gets into the lane, he reduces damage even more, right? Mm -hmm. Let's 
execute three is a forest power attack that has delay and it will give him delay. It's pierce and blunt, that's interesting. The second one is just pierce. After activating the two skills, the, then Yapi says that he gets a screw driver two times. So he uses the second uh, skill, and right after he uses the second skill, he is going to chase two times with screwdriver, right? And then gets the proof of mastery that will give all the attack and defense boosts. But after landing an attack, he gets a defense down of 50 per 50 percent. Yeah, percent. But it's just for that turn, so if he's on the lay, this is a uh, known issue, right? Yeah, his turn to attack and defense two parties is basically just one turn since he always attacks on the lay. Kind of unfortunate. Yeah, it's hard to give four effects because he will have to be attacked four times. It's kind of still similar to how Monica works, and both are as sword users. But he prefers the lay, she prefers fast. But it is a little easier to use. Monica, because her stance has a chance to trigger without affecting the remaining of the characters. She decreases the BP cost, but her damage is much inferior. But she buffs and heals, I don't know. Overall, uh, if you got Monica, I feel like you are safe. Getting him is interesting because he's a good counter, though. Actually, he's not a counter, he just wants to be hit, right? He's a cover tank. It doesn't counter. It's a different type. The counter is the Slim Robin, right? Isn't that why he's being attacked? Yeah. Dinner should have been called Fat Robin. Yeah, he's just a much better BP battery than uh, the Monica. BP battery? What do you mean that he's a much better BP battery than Monica? He doesn't give VP to the party. Or does he? Ah, he does. Recovers BP of all surviving allies. Recovers all other surviving allies, just like her. Um, but but he still has the locked uh, four BP generation, and he needs to use two skills to get into that stance. Do you f feel like she is not better than him? She can already give four BP reduction. Uh, Ah, because she gives VP reduction and he gives us straight out VP, right? It's all allies. Yapi mistranslated. Let's see. If he gives you... Yeah, all allies. If he gives to himself as well, he will have a uh, much less problem to generate VP. He gets four, but he doesn't have a chase. He only has screwdriver on the second turn two times. Four, then six. Then, if he generates four extra, it's still 14, and then uh, another three. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, he doesn't have enough to guarantee his own cycle. Starts with 10. Attacks once. Ends up with 17. No, no, wait, wait. What am I doing here? 14. Ends first turn with 14. Uh, then, okay, you use it 10. But let's let's just make the calculation of how much BP you generated. It's 14, then on the next turn, it's 20. And then, under plus, 4. Generated 14 BP in two turns. Actually, no, because you only generate this on turn 3. He doesn't have enough for his own cycle. You say that both S2 and S3 changes to times with screwdriver. Oh yeah, because those last for three turns, right? Ah, three turns. So you you reach a point where he can attack four times with screwdriver as well, no new flux. Does it say screwdriver? 
Mm, proof of mastery for three turns. Screwdriver plus will be activated two times. Activates at skill rank one. Because uh, he doesn't get this screwdriver attack on the turn two. After activating, you get proof of mastery. But he does not trigger on turn two, only on turn three. Because it lasts for three turns, you should be able to stack, since this cycle is two turns. There will be a turn where you have this stack twice. But even then, the way that he starts, he doesn't have enough BP to use his Q3 and his Q2 right after. You will have to rely on BP generation for external sources. This is not part of Proof of Mastery, it's just part of A2. Ah, okay. This proof of mastery is for three turns, and when Robin Mark hits, screw driver plus is activated twice. But you said what? Yeah. Both S2 and S3 chases two times with screw driver. It here it only says that. It's after Robin Mark hits. Robin Mark is the second skill. Uh, he does copy. Now Roman Saga says that he does recover BP to himself. S3 chases Global X. Ah. Let's see here. Barrel Salt, Forest Power. Grants the user failure to land. Two times. This was already inside of it. It's not described here. Um, I don't see this on my uh, Discord server as well. Big Robin has a mark for just status buff. So where did you saw that new flux? It's on passive one. Which part? Ah, after activating either Robin's Mark or Barrel Assault. Screwdriver plus will be activated. It's because this is day one, right? We don't have all the information spread. Uh, uh, some people translated like fake Robin only had a uh, status buff, but Yapi translated this as well, so it makes sense. So, double chains. The generation is better than. So you're gonna use Barrow Assault and change two times. No, his damage is much better now. What do you think about this, Socrates? His damage is much better. Two times with Screwdriver Plus. Triple S Power Attack. And he buffs STR. And it's Agility. Screwdriver Plus. Who has that? There's a character that has it. Uh, we can search via skills. You are away from keyboard. Okay. Uh, who has screwdriver plus? Someone that was released recently. I know that you can also amplify this, but let me check if it's medium or if it's small. Screwdriver plus. Chance to the buff medium. Yes. Okay, uh, that changes a little. Oh man, it's a forest attack with two chains of triple S power. Ah, Liza has it. I guarantee double chains of triple S. And then he will cycle the second. No, this is, this is good. I may not like the banner because of the other three styles, but this Robin will be good. It still gives BP generation to party. Of course, you got Monica, you are pretty safe because they will compete for the same slot, although you can still use them together. But he deals more damage. You will always be on this uh, delay stance after turn one, right? 
Their high bitter is starting to climb. <laughs> on JP, he will only chase to ice on turn two. And here we have a perfect cycle, I guess. Let's check how much BP he generates then. If he just attack with Barros out, he has uh, three extra from the attack and double chases, as you can see here. Oh, no, 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 it's at the end of turn. Uh, oh, I thought he got BP by attacking. Look who is here to say hi, Cretinha. Are you a companion to Zoro, Cretinha? Zoro has a black cat or not? Or am I dreaming? She's already scratching. Oh. Leonid has a black cat. Ah, uh, that's sad. Sorry, guys. I was thinking that he uh, gives one BP by attacking. When being attacked, recovers BP as well. Ah, okay. When being attacked. Wait. <laughs> now I don't know if uh, he's translating it well. He does have EP problems on turn two. You have to use S1. Oh. And... You actually have to use this guy with PP generators, or you're never gonna use him. I'm using S1 to do use S2 on turn 3 reduces utility by a lot. But look, it's at the end of turn on JP, but Yapi translated like when being attacked. No, 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 okay, okay. It's my bad. Reduce damage taken by 25, and then he has another damage reduction 30. Enough turn gets one BP. Who gets one BP by enough turn in this game right now? No one. Everyone gets at least two. So, well, in two turns he generates only eight BP. But if you have his uh, four turns, I mean, his four stacks of that. Um, what's the name of that again? Proof of mastery, right? He can give four BP. If you have a perfect cycle, he generates. 4 plus 4 plus 4. 12. And he uses 18. Yeah. Totally need a great BP battery. After S1, you get up to 4 BP for the whole party every time he's attacked, so it's good enough. But you mean after you already use it, skill 2 and then skill 1, right? Sorry, skill 3 and then skill 2, and then you can use skill 1. That's what you're talking about, right? So he will need help on start. Because he still need to trigger Barrel Assault and then Robbie's Mark. To have that Proof of Mastery, right? Or he gets Proof of Mastery by triggering any of those two. Now he gets by any or does he need to use it? You said that he needs to use S3 and S2. One sec.
I'm getting the other sandwich. Uh, after you ask one, you got up to four before the whole party. Every time, no, it's, it's this is the same answer. So I, uh, I'm a little confused by that. So this triggers after activating any. In both JP and CN is just a comma between the two skill names. So that means that it's any of those. You don't need to use both, right? Hello, Michelle. I have no idea if it means and or or. I don't know as well. Anyone with JP knowledge can uh, talk about how he works on JP. Still, he was, he's going to chase uh, Michelle says, and you think Robin was good. If he has an OPP generation, this guy uh, will be very good. On start, he will have some problems, like you said. You need to be hit four times. Not every fight you hit fake Robin four times. But if there is at least another VP battery in the team... Oh, Monica also needs another VP battery. He's gonna work on full cycle of S3 and S2. And with that... He'll do a lot of damage. Yes, he will. Well, the best banner, the best character of the banner, for sure. But still, uh, it's the only good character from the banner. At least he gives himself VP like Monica. Yes. He'll do more damage than Monica on a full run. You're the best character of the banner. Me? <laughs> Thank you. I'm eating some food to become Fat Robin cosplay. And eating sandwich. That's not so good for your health. So, um, Monica damage is terrible. Look. A power, C power. Having both is nice because she will decrease the VP cost of Robin. Robin will just work forever with Monica also having it back. I just want both Robins and no one else. Nah, uh, you don't want Muse as well. Okay, so the mass character of the banner and the only one that makes a difference now. Damage. Attack and defense boost, MVP generation. Great. Feel like this guy is... At least a 4 out of 5. The only one here. All the other ones are just low grades. Moving on, we have the next banner, right? Uh, also, what's the opinion of Yappy? Fake Robin kit centers around and going after the boss has attack. In contrast to Bonica. Who always prefers to attack first. He's a covert tank and is one of the main assets where it's tied to tackle an upcoming high difficulty remembrance battle against Megalith Dragon. The strategy is for fake Robin to get hit and provide attack boosts, uh, damage mitigation, MVP generation to the party. He still needs to get hit. There is still this. You want Robin and Muse? Yeah, going after both banners? Not for me. Is this a silver award? And because of having four characters, but uh, it's a silver minus. Just one character that affects the meta, three characters that don't affect the meta. Silver minus. I'm sorry, but even then. What do you think? You are a silver award. <laughs> uh, let's start talking about Muse then. Muse is a code staff support. Start of turn, she buffs all surviving allies' ailment resistance. It's by 45 points, I guess, not exactly 45%, but it, it helps, like Muse helped it in the past. She buffs all surviving allies' will by 5, is that really right? Just 5 Muse. Yeah, just 5. I'm stuck in floor 270 in Spyro JP. They say they have like 300 uh, floors, right? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, then also uh, defense boost, the off 
for one turn, but it triggers every turn. Recovers one BP to herself. In an end of turn, she cleans. This is the interesting thing. Poison, Berserk, Confusion, and Charm. But she doesn't uh, cleanse, petrify, and sleep. Sleep it's probably uh, lore-based because she's stuck in a dream. <clears throat> but petrify will be nice. But usually Confusion and Charm are the worst. But Paralyze is as well, and it's not here. No, they will never give a free cleanse by the end of turn. She can do it via skill tree, though. Yes, the one with the ninjas after a big bug boss. I don't know. I don't check the GP bosses. Uh, Muse, when being attacked, reduces damage by 25%. End of turn, recovers HP, recovers HP by 1. So she recovers 5 a total. Okay. Uh, when our allies are surviving, they reduce damage taken by 30% from resisted attacks. That's nice because we are using uh, good equipment since Katarina was released to trigger all of her passives anyway. And reduces damage taken again by 30. I don't know, weak attack and damage increases by 30 and reduces resisted damage by 30. And she gives it to everyone. She gives 30% damage increase for everyone. And our allies are alive. Activated on our allies, yeah. They get 30% damage increase when attacking weak targets. Okay, skill 1 cure water, that's a node skill. Heals damage and recover. The second one, prayer of purity. It's not that the same one that we have with uh, key. It's the same one, yeah, exactly the same one. Two times for battle, recovers buff will and ailment resistance. You'll be right back, okay, no worries. The music's from Estamir Sears, you know. Yeah, re remix it version. Then skill tree is the, the most interesting thing about this character. Uh, it has um, support, fast, and then it removes all debuffs to the party. I don't have a good debuff cleanser. And then it will buff everyone's status by 25% on max rank. And then recover HP by very small. And then cleans all ailments. And then buff ailment resistance. It's like everything that you ever needed in this game from a support buffer. Uh, just low values. Like right now we can buff a lot with Matrak. And it's also fast. Okay. The problem is the cost here. We have a 9 BP cost. She recovers HP, cleanses, removes debuffs. Like anything that the enemy can do to you, she will be removing. Debuffs. She cleanses. So that's nice. I feel like it's nice. It's just that she will need uh, BP battery to be used with her. She generates five. So you want this skill every turn. Depends on the squad, you can get it every turn. It's nice that she already decreased damage taken by quite a lot 30% and 15%. So it's easier to use than past version. They only had 20% via Scrum Guard. Just bring Professor and do all this on chance, you have to believe. Ah, you have all of this with a chance, of course. So, I don't think that she replaces Matriarch. It's, like, imprecise to think. But if you need debuff cleans or ailment cleans, she already becomes much more interesting. And we can use other cats that will be buffing status passively like Katarina. If you already have Katarina, it may be more interesting to bring Muse instead of match tracking some challenges. Especially if there are ailments and you can keep buffing ailment resistance. She buffs passively and actively. She's an upgrade to Muse now that they did these changes. And well, she just has everything that you may need. Cleans, debuff cleans, that's incredible. It's just that uh, we need a lot of offense recently, and if you're bringing Muse, you can still buff offensive status, but not as much as Matriarch. So, it will depend on the situations. But I believe that Muse is somewhat meta, just uh, meta support. Then we have Robin. Uh, Muse can be good for those who miss a key, though in current meta we may not see much use, especially also since we have the latest Matriarch. Yeah, competition is even more with Matra than with news with key, because we don't use key anymore, as much as we could. Now we have Robin, slim version. 
Star of Battle grants BP reduction. Two points. Permanent in battle. Oh, let me check this guy because I don't remember him that much. Yeah, BP cost reduction by two. Give yourself a more stance. Yeah, that's the best type of taunt we have in the game. And it's the same one that Julian has. The original tank Julian that counters. Bunkit Julian, like some people say. So, it's the same taunt that is already perfect by turn 2 onwards. And he has a guaranteed change that is Lightning Strike Plus. That's not really strong. It's just a power. Uh, the good thing is that it does give you an attack boost. And it stacks. And he has a counter, a guarantee counter. That reduces damage taken. And has a 25% chance to evade. And counters with double S power that buff breaks. People said that he is useful for the Megalith Dragon in the future. Hey, Thiago Travi. Yeah, you thought it was Dio, but it was me, Thiago. <laughs> uh, friend that has the same name. Welcome, Thiago. When does that banner arrive? Churizets. So, needed a stronger uh, chase, but having the guarantee counter with a buff break is interesting. And it has piercing lightning. Better than Piercing Blunt. Piercing Lightning covers more ground. Uh, then we have When Our Allies Are Alive. You decrease the damage taken by 30%, right? Increases the damage dealt. When you receive a resist attack, reduce the damage taken. Wait, 40? This version is 40%? When uh, Muse is 30? Yeah. Muse decreases by 30 and he decreases by 40. Because it's not the same passive. End of turn recovers 1 BP. It has maximum voltage. 150% on max. Well, it's a counter tank that uh, gets a stronger retain time. Uh, helps the party survive better already because of that 40% damage reduction via resist. And he has a good taunt and the chance to buff break. You can still use him as a buff breaker because this skill is fast. It will always cost 8. The second skill gives heat up and also 15% defense up. This is permanent in the fight. So he has two different ways to decrease damage taken. He also has a guard up extreme on start that lasts for how many turns? Two turns so that you have a better rate to start some fights. He, he is nice. He doesn't have the same damage as Fake Robin, of course. But he has a very interesting mechanic here of decreasing damage taken by everyone. Well, I would say that uh, Fake Robin is a little better, but the banner that he's in doesn't really help much. But having a. Counter with buff break may be interesting in the future as well. Use for all, Robin's just self. Self, let me check here. But now allies are alive. Increases damage dealt by all attacks. If you resist. Uh, ah! Yeah, thanks. Let me check on uh, Yappy. That, it becomes a little confusing to read when you have that many things. From all stands, center towns. Puts all colors from the alliance into stealth. Back uh, here, Dauntless Resolve. When our allies are still alive, all attack increases. When one self is attacked by an attack, will cause resist. He has one self. It's just written self. Thanks. So the only thing that he has to the party, uh, sorry guys, is that defense up. That's why we make these videos to fully understand stuff, because sometimes it's so hard to understand the translations and all. Hey, Gorge, welcome. Any meta OP, OP unit? No, there's no perfect five here. Ignore Neo like Neo was copy. 
No! I only saw later. WPCs. Ugh, that's a bad passage. Yeah, it's just to himself. Mm. And when attacking, Pierce Lightning will be attacked. That is an E power attack that has attack boost. Reduces damage taken by 25%. Has 25% chance to evade. Always counters with Robin Justice. Robin Justice is skill number 3. MVP. Buff breaks. Pierce and Lightning. Heat up, defense up, guard up. So he gives you a good start. Some fights where you bring counters, the enemy attacks so much on start. Robin is a counter as his word style, useful for a future high remembrance. Fight with Megalith Dragon. Most of these units are useful versus Megalith Dragon. As for Mouse Tense, which is the same counter Julian. Allowing Robin to taunt and provide stealth for the rest of the party. Inherit Matador for additional counter. Yeah, I was talking about this on your squad. You can inherit Matador so that you have double counter. Uh, sadly, there's no plus version of Matador yet. But hey, you can do it. Matador comes from his welfare style. And it allows him to have evasion. 7 VP and you counter two times. Dauntless Resolve, I think it's similar to Castle Impress. Dauntless Resolve. Ah. Okay. Yashi needs to resist as well. So he's good, but uh, just good. Not impressive and not anything else. Uh, the selling point is a buff break on counter that may or not be very important in the future. And we need counter units for the next Remembrance fight. And I believe this one is the best counter. Then we have Fairy. Uh, what was changed about Fairy? Uh, they changed her passive to... And one. New Flux is using Matador, meaning giving up on attack and chase with the attack buff. Probably good when you counter three times per turn. Yeah, because it doesn't do damage, Matador. We needed an amplified version of Matador that attacks and then enters the defensive stance. You are getting him to replace uh, Asper in some fights? Really? It's a fast buff break. No one has a fast buff break, right? Yeah. Fights like um, Firebringer will be a joke now. Because even uh, Asper can fail. He's the only decent counter style for us is worth we want him. For the future, right? Yeah, that's interesting that he has a fast buff break. It will only cost 8 for himself. He has 4 BP generation, still needs some BP battery that can come from either Monica or Fake Robin. So you need at least one of those guys. You already have one of them? Okay. Since Fake Robin is in the other banner, it will be better if you have Monica then. You cannot pull for both banners. Okay, that's the character. Now uh, we have Fairy. The Fairy status are usually terrible, especially Endurance. Let's see if they change this a little. They didn't change her status. No, they gave her more STR Endurance in you. I don't know by much. But okay, let's see. Uh, damage taking is reduced by 30%. On start off battle. Recovers BP by 2. In off turn, has a 37% chance to restore the usage of Fairy Circle. That's the same chance as Brownie. Big Robin will steal Robin's counters, so probably it's not a good combo. Because of the uh, cover, right? You are right, so Monica will be a better companion. 
If you want buff break every turn, you don't need buff break every turn. Depending on the fight versus Firebringer, you need. But some other fights, maybe not. Uh, what's Fire Circle? It's probably the third attack, right? Let me check here. Oh, it's a skill one. Skill one, fairy circle, support, two times per battle. Grants the user fairy prank. Four times. Fairy's power? Four times. Uh, fairy's prank. By the end of a turn, activates the following. Four times. Fuse overdrive gaunch. Recovers only HP. This is the same thing that Arpina does, no? Start of a turn. Attack boost. Here's attack boost. This is exactly what Arpina does, no? Not exactly, I think it's a little different. Yeah, except that she can get a refresh 37%, meaning that she will probably have a perfect cycle of that. Since she's Pierce, she has a place. In the case of Orpina, we have... Attack boost, Morali up. D, H, D, B, P. Ah, uh, she doesn't get the HP recover and gets another damage boost. Let's see, uh, no, no, she also recovers HP. OD HP, 5 BP. Four BP. Hmm. Already an improvement. Start of turn. Attack boost. Pierce attack boost. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, in the case of Arpina, is a Morale up. This version is better because we can still bring another Morale up from some other source. But all in all, it's pretty similar. Use slightly better. Yeah, medium instead of small. You can get it back. Does do nearly as much damage as her. Does do or does not do? Doesn't. Uh, it would depend on the skills that she has, right? Let me check here. Skill 3. For S power, single target before attacking. Uses Morali up. Ah, that's where the Morali up comes from. For one turn only. 12 BP. But then the BP generation will probably have a problem. Uh, this is an old passive now, Voltage Forest 2. But we have weak maximum voltage. Ah, up to 200% damage increase. Another 100, 300. 300. How much Arpina has? One hundred and twenty only. She has three hundred. Yeah, but I want to know what she uh, changes. She doesn't change this, or does she? No, she doesn't. It's only on overdrive. Ah, uh, yeah, that's why she doesn't do that much damage. And she would change with round slicer. 4S power attack, or if she's using an AoE attack, she chases with big wheels. Much less damage. Overall, Arpina chase attack is too strong. She'll probably do around 70-80% of the Arpina damage. And still takes time to build. But 37% chance to restore a uh, fair circle means that overall she will always have this available. She will work for long fights at the cost of doing less damage. And she is a Pierce damage dealer. At least she has less competition than her Pina. We work well with Shaw. Nah, no, not that much. Shaw decreases heat resistance. I don't know. 
Oh, it's a generic damage dealer that works for long fights, right? You only need to move for Pierce. Is she that strong, double OP? I only need two beer. Uh, we've had way too many Pierce DPS lately. We did. And strong ones, recently. Uh, Fairy is essentially for Remembrance Battles with her bonus on weak attacks and Pierce attack boost. Can inherit special persona to inflict unconsciousness against the ads on Siegfrey Remembrance. Uh, but Siegfrey Remembrance is not even that hard anymore. And for Spears, we even have a free character now that can do AoE. Ward. Ward is a G-Sword attacker. Passive one. While surviving allies will cause critical damage to aquatic fish and insect. Very specific. All surviving allies critical damage is increased by 30. When being attacked, damage taken is reduced by 30. Everyone or just himself? Because that <laughs> always leads me to confusion. You gotta run. No worries. Thanks so much, New Flux. I'll be releasing videos, one today, another one tomorrow. Tomorrow is the anniversary of the channel. I have something being cooked for you all to see. Five year anniversary tomorrow. I'll be announcing some stuff, so check the community page. This is just for himself. Going back. Lending a critical attack grants. All surviving allies is attack boost for two turns. All surviving allies defense boost for two turns as well. Buffs all status by 15%. And recovers all surviving allies BP by two. He will then recover for himself five. Mm. So he's a very peculiar character that you may even want to craft some critical weapons. Because uh, we will not be using him just versus aquatic fish and insect. Why would you just lock a character into that? How many boss enemies are like that as well? Those are a lot of effects for free. Does he have a chase attack or not? No, he doesn't. Lethal. Hypertension attack damage increases by 40 when landing critical increases by another 50. Good critical weapons do such little damage now. God, yeah. Uh, he is not something for damage. You can kind of forget about damage with this guy. Then skill number one. One time per battle. Grants all surviving allies the lethal hypertension. And... All surviving allies a fierce attack special, but this one is five turns. Okay, grants morale up 35 for one turn. Fierce attack special increases attack by 20%, and when landing on a critical attack, recovers EP by five. Whoa! This is very, very specific. It's even more specific than Thomas is. He gives this lethal uh, hypertension to everyone. Permanent. If you can lead critical attacks, it's a 90%. Well, the 40% damage increase is permanent. And then a 50 extra from critical. You can reach as much as 90%. But not many skills have critical damage. Then you have the extra fierce attack assault. That gives 20%. And then 5 EP when attack on critical. 
very, very specific. We don't use critical damage anymore. And he has a uh, Yaksha Flash, 3 to 5 hits. If he changes targets, he's going to get lots of VP, no? Because these things uh, trigger on different targets. Hello, Dragon Sable. How are you? He gives 15% attack and defense boost for two turns. This guy is very specific. I don't know why they gave him um, higher grade than some others. Very, very specific. I can uh, test him somewhere, but. Oh, it's hard to make use of this guy. How many of our recent nukers have uh, critical damage? By themselves. Like, uh, I don't know. Katarina. It's not a real, real nuker, but... I don't know. Not even Zilin has critical damage, does she? You can only think of Alnus. War seems fun. Yeah, fun <laughs> when you can make it happen. I think that's right, but he doesn't have anything good to spend that BP on. He doesn't. He just wants to keep using his skills, and the skills shouldn't have effects as well. They are just damage. They carry special uh, critical types, like he cover humans, beasts, flying enemies, demons. Immortality uh, is... What is immortality again? Well, it's the same uh, that we have with Matrak. You're like, it's evil. Mm, undead and demon. Undead, demon, human, beast, flying, insect, aquatic, and fish. Well, on Remembrance, you can probably make this happen all the time, because, look, the second skill is versus humans, and... Carmine is a human. Golden Lion is classified as human, I guess. And... Wuhan? So many bosses. Flying, we have... Uh, the Dragon? The next Megalith Dragon will probably be flying as well. I feel like on Remembrance you can kind of make this work all the time. In Sex, we have the real Queen. Demon Kazinsi? Does he cover all of the Remembrance fights? The, uh, he was a Saga Soul. He wasn't a Saga Soul. He was Saga Soul. That's why he's so strange. Saga Soul units are usually super strange. Saga Soul experimental units. Yes, they are. But he does work in all Remembrance types. Great Sword is in need of some extra support. So I guess that's okay. But. On real challenges, man, I'm gonna have some difficulty thinking about when to use this guy. His damage is really non-existent. He does have lots of things here, but I don't know. He doesn't have a chase attack, doesn't have an overdrive chase. As far as I know, he's good for 260. I don't even know what's 260. If you get him to work, you're gonna get a lot of effects. Okay, so uh, this guy here will be a 3 out of 5 as well. It's really hard to use. Extremely hard to use. Ward is a critical specialist, mostly for aquatic fish and insect enemies. Rather than shade, though he will be very potent against the right boss types. For example, against the future Spiral 260, which is insect type, standalone type. Yeah. Uh, Kazin Sion 240 is a demon type. He can already work well there, but the thing is, uh, if the enemy is not aquatic, fish and insect, your other character will not take full benefit of everything. Yes. 
But aquatic fish and insect. Uh, let me enter uh, the game now, and I'll see how many characters, I mean, how many bosses from Spyro are considered aquatic fish or insect from the ones that we have from Spyro alone. Well, because he is not. 230. We have, oops. What is the name of this uh, water lord? Is it water lord? Wait a second, guys. Uh, I was just running some memory rematches. I need to go back to this challenge. Spiral. Water Lord. Water Lord is considering none. He doesn't have a class. 320. It's a skeleton. It's undead. And Mayo as well. But only from his own skills, not from the other characters of the party. Versus Ludwig is human and Mayo. Just his own skills, but not the main ones. No, quite man, very very specific, even more specific than Thomas. The thing is that when he's on full potential, he's much better than just Thomas. It's a bug boss in floor 260. Okay, uh, you said that you are on 260 or 270. Okay, and then uh, the next guy is Young Fang, which is an MR's attacker. Starts the fight with 20 BP. <laughs> Attack damage increases by 20, end of turn recovers 2. If no damage is taken... Ah, sp speaking about uh, farmer, I don't even know if he's a farmer. Uh, I got me Kale in the end, Socrates. I have a full banner. I'm tra uh, training him as well. Yeah, it's a farmer, of course. Uh, if no damage is taken on the turn, it covers 5. Always recovers another 2, and by the end of turn, you recover 3, so you get 10 BP per turn. Um, 70% damage increase, and then another 20, 90%. Skill 1 is Dark Spread, AoE, Shadow Attack, chance to inflict stun. No. Power grab? Plus, ah, we can amplify power grab. Thanks, copy. So I have Monica and Mikhail. B power. When the attack lands, recovers the user HP. Still by the same. Still small. It's just stronger now? Ah, cheaper. Four instead of five. Hmm. Why would you want Power Grab if he's a character that wants to be used on farming? Then skill 3. Deep Power, AoE, Blunt and Shadow. Attacks random enemies 3 times. The attack hits, 25% chance to stun. Oh, it's not this much like, I don't know, um, Sochi's? Deep Power, 3 hits. She got a 3 hit attack. Green slicer. AoE 3 hits. But hers is Shadow and Slash. His is. Blunt and Shadow. I already have this covered by uh, Shiel. Still, will uh, solo easily content. And he'll be able to use this 3 times in a row if he wants. 
Young Fennis a simple blunt and shadow farmer. Can inherit spot your persona for single full farming? I doubt that he's going to kill anything with special persona. Totally doubt. It's just AoE farming. Why does he have power grab and dark spread? There is another soldier. Yes, there is one. You don't train Mikaeus. Mikaeus trains you. <laughs> Say he's a big fan. Uh, the above are based on GP characters that I have seen from the Hard 5 Remembrance Megalith Dragon Battles. Overall, the value of both banners are mid, in my opinion, with Professor and Fake Robin banner being slightly higher value, though. Muse banner will have no off banners. I don't know if I agree with that. Overall, uh, Professor is a no-go. If you are thinking about the future, it's just too much RNG reliant. You will eventually get uh, reliable support. But again, some people like this type of uh, skills because you only need to clear that then fight once, right? So, restart to your works. That's Saga for you. And then we have what? Black, that's a very generic character. Really nothing that stands out. A counter specialist with an AoE buff break. Uh, Leonid is, well, not as good as our other debuffers, just average as well. Robin, fake is nice, this one I like. We need a BP battery, but on full potential his damage is gonna make a difference. Uh, part of the best ones. Muse is still meta in some way. I feel like Robin and Muse have like at least a 4 out of 5 grade, and this Robin may be a a 3.5, I'm not so sure yet. All the other ones are at least 3 or lower. None of them are important. Only need to clear it once, at least until they release new difficulties. And then you need to clear it once again, <laughs> because it's a different stage. Really, really... Uh... Strange. Nine characters and three are interesting, the other ones are just non essential. No meta. But that's okay. We don't need new meta units every new week, right? We cannot recover our gens. Both banners are easy to skip if you think about. Like, um, if you don't have key, it's even better to summon four muse, I suppose. The good thing about muse banner is that we have two units that are somewhat useful. Uh, you have muse. And at least Robin. Fairy, Ward, and Young Fen are hard to use. Fairy is just a generic damage dealer with no party support. Ward is extremely niche. And Young Fen is yet another farmer that seems like we have one new farmer on each banner. But I don't care about farmers anymore. Let me guess Silver Ward, five ban. <laughs> Silver is mid, you know. Bronze is terrible. So there's that. <laughs> oh, Galstrom, welcome. Thanks so much for the help, my friend. My meager contribution and gratitude to your work in helping us focus on our resources better. Hey, thanks for saying that. Uh, let me say thanks. Let's guys uh, say thanks. Send our emojis, virtual hugs. Guy Elstrom. Thank you, my friend. Your help is appreciated. So, because Muse Banner has two interesting units overall, and you still have five units and no off banner, uh, it, it does have by, uh, bigger volley. I would say that this banner has silver volley. And Professor Banner has Silver Minus Valor, even with four units. That's my opinion. What do you think? In Adventures with the Music Share, glad to hear it. Yeah, it's Saga EGM. It's Saga. But welcome, my friend. So overall, 
5 units banner with 2 interior scene units, or a 4 units banner with 1 interior scene unit. It's not that you cannot use these units, it's almost impossible to say that one of the new releases is super bad that you won't be using. But, uh, okay, I'll be using Professor probably in the place of someone like uh, he varies in my gun squad, but that <laughs> doesn't make it an awesome unit. And the black is too generic, I mean, it works, he counters, but we already have like two counters for axes and we'll get one more. Then Leonid is okay, but even then his debuffs are not that important. He doesn't debuff intelligence, just has the art and agility. If an enemy has MR's attacks, okay, he's the best, but we have so many debuffers now that Paulus still breaks most of them. Robin fake is really good then. With Muse and Robin being good ones as well. So a 5 unit banner with 2 good ones is always better than a 4 banner with just 1 good. Gelstrom says I had peachy banner, hard banner, so my resources were in the toilet. So getting Katarina and Monica on the same temple on number 3, it was a cheering moment. I needed to pity Monica. You got the best ones in that pool. Nice. Glad you're mixing it up. I don't mean to throw you off. Oh, no worries. I sometimes place these soundtracks in the background. Because they are pretty long. They have a remix of two hours playing. So what do you all think? Did I miss out on something? Um, I don't know. Do you feel like this deserves a Bronze Plus uh, copy? <laughs> bronze Plus for Professor Banner? And uh, Silver for Muse Banner? Muse Banner is better. What do you think about Socrates? Are you still there, dog? Oh, Dragon and Saber, I missed something that you said. You said, I just recovered from food poisoning. It was painful. Sorry, I didn't saw that. You are still there. I hope you recover well. Sometimes I miss some messages because my chat box is small. You like I'm going to skip? You can still skip. I will be skipping. I would love to have Muse, but I will be skipping. I believe that uh, Robin Slim may be useful for me on the Megalith Dragon because I would not have another counter specialist. I will have to be very creative with my SS Word users. I don't know, like using Mikhail as a counter. Maybe someone for Robin, but it's just him. Yeah, so many good banners coming up. You have no gems, plus almost Pity and Monica, so I'm going to skip. I see. Hopefully we get uh, lots of events with these banners. Since they are bringing us the Saga Soul banner together with the normal banner. I don't know if the Saga Soul had some event. Monica have counters as well. Oh, you are right. Global X style. But that's an AoE counter. But still, if it works, it works. You will stop the combo from the enemy. I may still work on the Megalith Dragon. All I know is that you need to counter him or else he attacks multiple times. But overall, both banners are skippable. If you don't feel like pulling, I'll be giving it a silver award because it has five units. But it's not even silver plus. It's just silver, the other one will be silver minus. I believe, that's what I'm thinking here. I'll be releasing the first video about Professor Banner because it's the one on the top. It's on the top here as well. And then I'll be releasing the other one tomorrow morning. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, I'll also be announcing uh, the celebration for the channel. Starting from tomorrow, it will be five years old. Five years of YouTube career. I'm really, really happy about that. Sometimes I may not feel like because I'm thinking <laughs> when I'm thinking my uh, mind goes away. But if you don't want to pull on these banners, it's time to save. We don't know what they are going to release. Maybe Saga Emerald Beyond banners will be coming. We don't know, but this idea of fusing banners already means something. Either they are starting a new wave of, I don't know, different game. Or they are doing something for Emerald Beyond. And I do believe that something from Emerald Beyond will come. So if I were you, even if I like these units, I will not pull on release. I will wait. 
Unless you really love these units anyway. Wait, because Katarina already changes a lot of our banners. I mean, a lot of our content. She opens up one slot. Artelemy also has a counter, no? You mean the fire counter? The fire counter comes from his human style. That no, no, no. He has a... it with his first style, yes. But I don't have any recent Bartholomew anyway. So it will not work for me. We are getting close to two hours of stream. And since I'll be making the video, I'll be finishing the, the stream soon. But anyone has any uh, doubts? Want to make any question? Want to suggest something? Say, I don't agree with you. I agree with you. I'm open. Sim, sim, sim. I didn't hear long enough to give you an opinion. Oh, okay, no worries. But you can always uh, send me a PM if you want. I'm okay for now, I just need to see that in action, especially Ward. Yeah, Ward is a character that will be amazing on very specific fights, just like Thomas will be. But I doubt that one character can change just like uh, being the only one able to clear. I cannot clear a stage without Thomas. I cannot clear a stage without Ward. So, those type of specialists are never must-haves. Any older style that had no support a long time, this is a good time. Good for them. Yeah, Robins never had premium styles the first time. Thanks, Emerald Mera. What do you guys think? Who or skip? I will be skipping. For now, for anyone who is a fan of any of these side characters presented, now it's your time. Yeah, lots of people are fans of Romancing Saga 3, and I do believe they will like these banners. I will be using Muse when uh, the time asks for her, and I will be using Fake Robin. I believe those will be the most used units in my squads, with Slim Robin being used here and there. But he will not replace Asper most of the time, just here and there. The fake Robin can be a main pierce damage dealer. In the fights where I use a Trow, you can totally use fake Robin. Thomas made two recent romancing challenge, it's pretty easy. Arsenal and Sandino. Not as in shares, you think. <laughs> Arsenal! Arsenal, I beat it on day one. Arsenal is blunt damage. Sandino is blunt. I think it's blunt and slash, right? So yeah. He was made for those fights. <laughs> in this game, like, there was a phase where, like, I don't know, many bosses were reaching Slash, so we just stomped it with Kihachi. When was the last time you stomped it with Kihachi? It's been a while. They can just say, I don't want to have enemies that use blunt attacks for a while. And you say, oops, where is my Thomas? And just remember that Kihachi has double element, and they stop it allowing her to work. Eventually she will be back, because they will have to make enemies weak to Slash or Cold. But it has always been like that. Sometimes a unit is more used because of the content. Stumbled Firebringer with her last week. Uh, you mean who? Kihachi? But... Firebringer is old content now. But yeah, she's the best damage dealer there. But I mean, a newer content, we don't have. All recent content countered Kihachi somehow. They didn't want you to use her. 
They know the character just makes it super easy. And for now, Thomas may work. But what about the future? What about the next challenge? That's what I say. We cannot have like one specialist for each elemental type or else we have like a roster of 100 useful units. And you can, I mean, why not? But then prepare to spend in the game. But overall, guys, this is the end of the stream because we discussed all the styles. No one wants to say anything, so <clears throat> sorry. If you have anything to say, call me up on Discord and I'll be releasing the first preview before is that time and the other one tomorrow. Okay, what do you think about Monica, Mikael's skill, flash, speed and cool? Best farmer even for a single target. I don't mind about farming anymore, really, but I only use it his AoE cycle for now. I need to check his single target cycle. But getting one second doesn't really make much difference for me, Night Night Stamina. I have like 20 farmers already. Having 21, it's just there. I don't get excited for farmers. <laughs> I'm being honest. You'll know that I'm honest. So guys, thanks so much for watching this. Uh, please click the like button before you leave. Uh, how many likes do we have? If you have at least 20, I'll be fine. We have 18. 21 now. That's amazing. Uh, so thanks to all of you. We'll be live tomorrow, I guess. I'll be announcing stuff because tomorrow is the anniversary of the channel. Where was I? And I'll be announcing something on the start of the day. The full celebration will be on the weekend. Because uh, tomorrow I still have some real life stuff to do. But... We can, we'll be fully celebrating the five-year anniversary of the channel. But I'll say farming these books is getting a bit obscene. Because we are getting them faster than we should be. Like, uh, two times faster sometimes. That's why it can be a little too much. Uh, yeah, hit the like button. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Goodbye, my friends.